this week and next week at the Madison Library, we're going to be talking about some barnyard animals. I thought it would be fun to do a sensory bin with barnyard animals. This one is an edible sensory bin, which will be even more fun. You can see I use different textures of cereals and granola bars to make this a fun project for the kids. Let me show you how I did it. To make your sensory barnyard, of course you're going to need some animals. I got mine from Amazon. And you can even use things like Legos or the trees from Legos or the different figures. Just have a lot of fun with it. This project just needs your imagination. For the barnyard around the animals, I used foods of different textures so the kids can feel it, eat it, and play with it. Let's get started. I used a variety pack of different cereals, some granola bars, goldfish, and an oat crunch cereal. I took the granola bars and broke them into different sizes. They remind me of haystacks. I used a large flat plastic tub for my sensory bin, but you can use a 9 by 13 pan, a tray with sides on it, whatever works for you. I sectioned off parts of the bin with the granola bars. It kind of looked like it was being divided by haystacks. You can design it in any way you want. Just let the kids play with it and see what they come up with. I cut some blue paper for a pond, and then I took the goldfish and put those inside. Next, I loaded up the different areas with all different kinds of cereals, starting with the oat crunch cereal. The Cocoa Krispies could add kind of a muddy look for another area of the barn. It's time to add the Frosted Flakes. Here's some Frosted Mini Wheats. These are called Little Bites. This is Grandpa Bob's favorite cereal. If you have it on the sugar side up, it'll look like it was snowing. It's up to you. Now add the animals, or plastic trees, or Legos, whatever you want to put in that sensory barnyard. Not only will the kids have fun playing with it, but they'll have fun making it, designing it, and eating it. Sometimes animals need a separate place where they can play in the mud. Let's make one for them. Mix up a package of chocolate pudding according to the package directions. I put my chocolate pudding in an 8x8 pan, and then I just started to put the animals in. Of course, the pigs go first. Oh my, this pig wants to play in the mud. You know what happens then. I think he needs a bath. Let's see what we need to do. Let's bring in a place that the kids can wash the animals off. Here we go. Oh, that looks much better. What a fun thing for the kids to get to do. They get to play with the mud, they get to play in the barnyard, and now let's read them a story. While the children are playing with their sensory bin, you could be reading them a story or you could read it before they play and get their imagination going. I found this one about a barnyard called Job Wanted by Teresa Bateman. The publishers are Holiday House. I think you're gonna like it. An old farm dog plodded down a dirt road, paws sore and stomach empty when he reached a farm. He marched right up to the farmer. Do you need a dog, he asked. No, the farmer replied. Dogs just eat and don't give anything back. They're not like cows or horses or chickens. They pay for their keep. Do you have an opening for a cow, the dog asked. The farmer scratched his nose. Well, sure, but you're not a cow. We'll see about that, the dog said. I'll start work tomorrow. Okay. The next morning, the dog was up before dawn. He opened the barn door and herded the cows into place. When the farmer saw all the cows ready and waiting, his eyes popped. 
He did the milking in no time. When he got to the last stall, he, the dog said, moo. <laughs> The farmer shook his head. I'll grant you it was handy having the cows ready, but you're not a cow, so I'm afraid there's no job for you here. The dog was disappointed, but not discouraged. Do you have an opening for a horse, he asked. The farmer scraped off his boots. Well, sure, but you're not a horse. We'll see about that, the dog said. I'll start work tomorrow. When the farmer went to the barn early the next morning, the cows were all in their stalls ready to go he said. The milking went quickly, leaving time to plow the field. The farmer went out to hitch up the horse to the, to the plow. Standing next to the horse was that dog again. The dog said, nay, the farmer frowned. I appreciate your help with the cows, but this harness won't fit you. He hooked up the plow and headed to the field. The horse trudged along at its, at its snail's pace. The dog hurried to the garden for a bunch of carrots. He ran in front of the horse, dangling the tasty orange treats just out of reach. Soon, the farmer was running behind the horse, hanging onto the plow for dear life. The plow was done in jig time. The farmer looked down at the dog. You're still not a cow and you're not a horse. There's no job for you here. The dog was disappointed, but not discouraged. Do you have an opening for a chicken, he asked. The farmer fiddled with his straw hat. Well, sure, but you're not a chicken. We'll see about that, the dog said. I'll start work tomorrow. The farmer went to put his feet up, something he'd never been able to do before. The next morning, the dog got the cows into the barn for milking, fed the horse some carrots, then introduced himself to the hens. The chicken coop was a mess with dirty straw everywhere and the nest boxes all a clutter. I'd better tidy it up, the dog declared. So he cleaned out the whole thing and put fresh straw in all the nests. Soon the chickens were laying eggs in their boxes, clucking happily. The dog built himself a cozy nest, then he settled down for a nap before the farmer came to gather the eggs. As he snoozed, a fox slipped slyly across the field. The farmer was in the barn milking the cows. The fox slid behind the stable and over to the chicken coop. Uh-oh, that could be trouble. He reached in one furry paw to steal a chicken or an egg. The floor was clean. He reached in farther, patting until he felt a big straw nest. His paw reached up and grabbed. Bark, 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 clucked the dog, scaring the fox so badly that he shot out of the barnyard and went running for the high hills. The farmer heard the commotion and sprinted outside to see the fox, a streak of red heading, heading south. He looked up into the chicken coop. The hens were all in their places and settling down again after the foo for all. Everything was neat and tidy. Gathering eggs would be a breeze. Why, he could do it in jig time. There in the middle was that dog. It was clear who he had to thank for there being any eggs or chickens at all. The dog looked at him and said, Cluck. The farmer hitched up his overalls. I'm sorry, he said. I don't have any openings for cows. My horse position is filled. You're not quite right for chicken work, but I might have one job that has just opened up. Hmm. Let's see what that is. The dog looked at the farmer and wagged his tail. I'm starting to think that what this farm needs is a good dog, the farmer continued. Do you think you can handle the job? And the dog said, ruff. And that's the end of the story. Yeah. That was Grandma Lou over there. <laughs> I hope you enjoy your edible sensory bin, and I hope you enjoyed the story. Let me know if you made one and are having fun with it. You can email me at b. B-O-W-E-N at mcls.ms.